What is your hypothesis as to how 9-11 and how we digested and weathered it might have been different had Facebook and Twitter been here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, when I was thinking about the, the 20th anniversary of the attacks, it really made me realize how much the internet profoundly shapes the way we consume these really sort of critical news events and really sort of tragedies. Um, so I think at the time, like if you think about it, if as the as we were sort of getting information about the attacks, there would news organizations would have been tweeting updates from the law, law enforcement and the White House. We would have likely seen graphic footage of of people running away from danger or jumping from danger on YouTube. You know, on Facebook, we would have seen politicians talking about how they're praying for grieving families and and they're sort of pledging. Um, you know, calling for justice uh, on behalf of those families. And so I think there would have been a lot of us would have been focusing a lot on, you know, what was happening on our screens and, and maybe less on sort of conversations with our loved ones huddled around the TV screen um, like we did back then. Meantime, the Taliban has taken over Afghanistan and they are much more technologically savvy today than they were 20 years ago. They are using social media to get their message out. I spoke with the head of Instagram, Adam Masseri, uh, a few weeks ago as the Taliban was taking over to talk about how Instagram and Facebook are managing this. Take a listen to what he had to say. The Taliban is under U.S. sanctions, which means that uh, due to our dangerous organization policies, we don't actually allow any presence, any celebration, any promotion, or any representation of the Taliban on Instagram or on any of the Facebook apps or applications. And so we were relying on that policy to proactively take down anything that we can that might be dangerous or that is related to the Taliban in general. Now, Facebook and Twitter, Naomi, are always under pressure to manage uh, terrorist messaging across social media. But now are they under even more pressure now that the Taliban is back in power? Yeah, I mean, we've seen some, some reporting, particularly from the New York Times, about how the Taliban is currently using social media, particularly Twitter, um, to get its message out, this idea that it's a sort of kinder, more gentler organization than the one we remember when it was in power so long ago. Um, and so that inevitably brings up the question about how those platforms are policing an organization that the United States hasn't, you know, has considered a terrorist organization. Um, Facebook, you know, as, as Adam alluded to, Facebook has banned the organization. Twitter hasn't done a direct ban. Um, but even with restrictions against the Taliban, of course, you know, the in sympathizers of the Taliban, um, you know, are getting their message out on social media anyways. And the platforms are going to have to figure out how exactly, how much to, to stop them and, um, and whether they'll be able to catch all that, that content. 